So what I have here is um, some information about the times taken to solve a problem of all students in two classes. Okay, And let's say this is class A and this is class B. Now, what we can see is we've got two box plots here. There's a scale here. The scale is showing time. And lower times are better in this case because we're thinking about a faster time would be better. Okay, So you can see class A has someone that's done it in maybe two minutes or whatever this two is in time. And then we have all the rest of the data in the box plot there. Now what we need to do is compare the distributions, meaning that we need to say something about which class did better, which class performed more consistently and so on. So when you compare distributions, there's a couple of things that you need to do. Now I'm going to write them in bullet points. Okay, So I'm going to go bullet point number one. Now bullet point number one, what you want to do is you want to compare a measure of average or measure of central tendency. Okay, So you can choose the mean, the median, the mode, any of those things would be fine. And whatever is most suitable in the, in the data that's given to you is the one that you should choose. Okay, so in this case, because we've got box plots, median is the best. Okay, so median is our measure of average in this data. Okay, so what we're going to say is the median for A, so median for class A, is um, 8. Okay. And for class B, it is 10. And then we're going to say class A, so class A has a smaller median. Therefore, so we need to explain it in context now. So, so far what, what I've done is I've stated what the median is for class A and the, what the median is for class B. Now I've made the comparison in this part here. Class A has a smaller median, so I've compared now. And now I need to interpret. So if I interpret, I will say, therefore, class A were faster. Okay? So in this case, faster is better, smaller time is better. Um, in a different case, if we're thinking about, for example, how far you can throw, then a larger distance would be better. So we're going to say, you know, we're going to compare the median and we're going to say that, you know, the larger distance was better. In this case, we're saying class A were faster. Okay? So that's point number one. Now, point number two, you want to compare a measure of spread. So you've got a couple of options here as well. You can compare the range, or you can compare the interquartile range, or you can compare the standard deviation. Okay, so those are the measures of spread that we're going to be thinking about in our course, and we need to compare them. Now, when we've got box plots, the best one to use would be the interquartile range. Okay, so we can see that the interquartile range for A is 12 take away 6, which is 6. Okay, so 12, upper quartile here is 12, lower quartile is 6, so 12 take away 6 is 6. So the IQR for A is 6 and for B it is, let's see, so for B the upper quartile here is 11 and the lower quartile is 8, so this is 3, 11 take away 8 is 3. Okay, and we're going to full stop there. And then we're going to say class B, class B were more consistent. Now, you can say, uh, for, for, for this one, uh, you can say um, class B were slower, for example, for the first bullet point. And in this case, where we're saying class B were more consistent, we can actually say that um, class A had more variation. Okay? Uh, actually, here I am missing something. I didn't 
say a statement of comparison. I didn't say that class B had a smaller IQR than A, or I didn't say class A had a higher IQR than B. Okay, so I should have said that actually. But so this is an interpretation, okay? But before this line, I may have wanted to say, or I should really have said, class B have a smaller IQR, okay? And then after I said that, I could have said, therefore, class B were more consistent, okay? So this is the statement of comparison here. This is the statement of comparison here. And then when I say, therefore, class A were faster, this is interpretation. And class B were more consistent, this is interpretation, okay? So that's how you interpret the measure of spread. So if I was to compare standard deviation, for example, I would look at which one is smaller. I would state that this, there's one that's smaller. And then I would say, therefore, they were more consistent. Okay. Um, the other thing we can look at here is we can look at the skew. Okay, so we can look at how it's distributed. So here, I can see that the median is closer to the lower quartile, so this is positively skewed. And here I can see that the median is closer to the upper quartile, so this is negatively skewed. So this is the last comparison I'm going to make. So I'm going to say A has a positive skew and B has a negative skew. Okay, so the key points are these. We need to uh, think about which measure of average that we're going to compare. Okay, so it could be mode, median and mean. And we compare them. We say that one is more than the other or one is less than the other. Then we interpret it. So in this case, it was about being faster, so therefore the smaller one was faster. Second point is we want to compare a measure of spread. So here we've got IQR. Now, we stated what it is, but then I should have really said class B have a smaller IQR or I should have said class A have a higher IQR, okay? And after saying that, I could have said class B were more consistent. But you can say it this way around as well, it's fine. But it makes more sense to say this first and then to say this. Okay, so we need to clearly state this, although it's obvious after we write the numbers. And then finally, because we can see what the skew is here, okay, so we should also compare the skew. So A has a positive skew and B has a negative skew. And don't worry about interpreting this one. Usually, you, know, you only really need to interpret one of these, but I would say that it's best to interpret the one for the average and the one for the measure of spread. Now, here's a question for you. Okay, so uh, what you see is uh, two frequency polygons here. I've sort of marked out on the axes what the main uh, important values are that you're going to need to know. So the height here is 8, the height here is 9. This starts at 3, this also starts at 3. This ends at 14 and this ends at 17. Okay? And let's say the context is the height of plants. Okay? So two sets of plants. So there's set A and set B. Okay? So in two different conditions they've been growing. And these are the heights of the plants, okay? Uh, so height is plotted along here, and then the frequency is going along there, okay? So you need to compare the distribution using the things that I've said in this video.